So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Mr. John Warwicker. Hi. Good evening. Thank you very much. Thanks for all, whoa. Thanks for all coming here, making an old man very happy. That's right. Um, with, I always think like with Neville, Adrian, and myself, it's like a design last as summer wine. <laughs> We've got to figure out which one's compo. Um, okay. My grandfather's a mathematician. It's where it all started. It's my grandfather's a mathematician. He was also interested in philosophy. Um, he was vaguely interested in culture. So he had a few books and things like that, and he would engage with it, but not actively. Um, but he doted on me, and like any six to eight year old, I was, you know, loved him totally. And so long, long country walks across the Sussex Downs, him explaining things and simplifying things. And it's where I actually got into typography, I guess. The one thing he showed me that I was really interested in were, was his little books and sketchbooks of equations. Um, because he used to work for like Lloyd's Insurance estimating the risk of an oil tanker between Bombay and Rotterdam. And he would explain to me all these things and he'd look at the weather patterns and work out mathematical models. Um, and one of the great things, you know, after all these pages, I said, well, that, does that give you the answer, Grandad? And he went, no. And I said, well, how do you get the answer? He says, I guess. <laughs> and <coughs> that was wonderful. That was wonderful, you know, to, as, to, as a kid to know that. Where he lived, I mean, it's my summer holidays, you know, because I lived in London with my mum and dad, and virtually every summer holiday was spent down with him in Rottingdean in Sussex. And we'd go for walks because he was the sort of three-piece wool suit, granddad with a fob chain. He wasn't exactly playing soccer, you know. So he would march ahead and not have to scurry and catch up. And then one afternoon, my grandfather and my father went for one of our walks, and, which was quite military with my grandfather, you know. Um, he was strode along. And we went to a place called Wilmington. And although I couldn't really articulate it, there was another one of those moments because having drawn that morning we went into the village and it's a, if you've never been there it's a it's a classic english churchyard you know sort of 11th century church 600 year old yew tree really beautiful turn the corner i saw this which is the long man of wilmington now at that time people thought it was a neolithic drawing incised in the side of the hill, just the grass taken off, exposing the chalk. And as my grandfather explained this to me, I just felt this really odd connection between the chalk that I was using to do my drawing on the promenade and something of deep history, and really connected the idea of drawing to the world. I mean, the other thing was that I was fortunate enough to be at art school when punk happened. And that was fascinating. You know, just the energy of that. I mean, there was two... Can I go back even further? Um, early 1960s, South Coast, Brighton. And, you know, I was walking along the coast road, heard this almighty roar, turned round, and all these mods were going past in their Vespers. This is my Quadrophenia moment, right? to go to Brighton to fight the rockers. And they were just like, you know, contemporary med medieval knights on their steeds. You know, with this incredibly, the chromed, the mirrors, the flags, and the roundels, the graphics. And I didn't know what was happening. Um, and then I found out about it. And that was the first time music, fashion, and graphics all meant the same thing you know, about this expression of dynamic youth culture, you know, um, which was set against, you know, the vestiges of 1950s Britain. And that was extraordinary. That was absolutely extraordinary. And I remember being in Hannington's department store with my grandfather, coming down the stairs. Now, I think it must have been like the uh, beauty department, because they're always on the ground floor of 
department stores and these two rockers, because Hamptons was in the lanes, and these rockers just ran through the, the store and you go, huh? And then the mods on the Vespers came in and I was going, cool, and my grandfather was going, get them into the army. <laughs> so, you know, so, um, so, I mean, that, that was the first time I really under, you know, understood. The connections, the, 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 the matrix of things, the things that really so sort of excite me about a place and then imagining that place in time. The blue plaques in London. On the left was where Handel used to live. On the right, Jimi Hendrix. You know, what the ghosts must talk about, you know, is, is fantastic. Um, and that is what is so special about this city. Especially now I live in Melbourne, in Australia. Nothing against Melbourne at all. But the specialness of places like London. Um, I mean, I, th I, have a, I have a theory about what makes a creative city. And that is the montage mosaicness of somewhere that is... Um, normally means a deep history as well. I mean, because we're, li we're talking in a city at the moment that is all about, it is formed from this dynamic matrix of connection. The namings of these streets, you know, um, the history of this place and the contemporary mix all create this culture which then frames and informs and shapes who we think we are, who we think everyone else is, and what our work is. Commercial work. This is the Sony Collected Identity. The I Sony came to us, amongst others, and said we want a logo for all our collected technologies. What they meant was one of those really weird little hieroglyphs you see on the sides of computer boxes that you don't really know what it means. And the conversation we had was, well, that doesn't seem right. I mean, the questions are, what shape is a network? And how does it behave? And doing a little glyph like that, does that communicate it? So we wrote back to Sony and said, we think you got it wrong. We think there's something else here. How about not doing like an illustration of a network, but making a network itself um, that is dynamic, that is living? Uh, and they said, great, get on the plane, come over here, let's talk. Um, and I went there into Sony headquarters with Steve at the time, who was our manager director, and now Co, who was our translator. Um, and met a ma wonderful man called Konasan, who was the man who named the Walkman the Walkman, uh, and 32 other people in the ballroom. And he said, this sounds really interesting. And remember, this is 2001. And he said, do you know how to do this? Was his first words. And my first word was no. He said, okay, you got the job. <laughs> All of these inform the possibilities of how to read the world. They're just ideas. And then you make your own mix album of the ideas. The little ripples eventually become pop culture. You know, from what you might call academia. And I wouldn't put academia above pop culture at all. And you might say, well, that's a very postmodernist attitude. But I've never, you know, before I knew the word postmodernism and there was a canon of thought that was called that, well, you know, but then what is it? I mean, you know, you could go, well, OK, there's ultra-modernism now, or there's post-structuralism, or there's... You know, it, just ideas. You know, there's the chalk, there's the pavement, get on with it. One of the guys that was in my um, class, Steve Walsh, he worked on sniffing glue. And he was doing, like, paste-ups and things. And so he was... Again, he didn't know much about it until, you know, there was Steve dressed as he was, all different, etc., etc., with his, with his attitude. Um, and it's great, I mean, you know, and you go, yeah, this is interesting, tell me more. You know, and it was, it was never part of that movement, but, you know, you just, you're as an observer in it, you know, and, and meeting McLaren was, 
and which was highly entertaining. You know, um, and that was interesting. You know, because there was something else going on there. You know, situation ski de bore, all these things. You go, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Ah, join up the dots. It's all of this. You know, and that's what the talks about tonight. Are all those things. You know, um, of how the joining up the dots is so. In, you know, it's like a DNA map of yourself, of your culturally formed self. And this is my eight-year-old son, Noah, enjoying life and the waves in Melbourne. And funnily enough, I think going through the same things that I went through with my granddad. Thank you.